our obituary and newspaper index is a companion for our microfilm newspaper collection, which contains more than a thousand reels of newspapers published in Butler County. And there are 478,000 citations in this index and it continues to grow. Our newspaper collection spans from 1818 to 2019. So somewhere in those two centuries of newspapers and close to half a million entries in our index, there's probably something relevant to your family's history for you to discover. And it's not just obituaries in our index anymore. Our team of volunteers has gone back and started pulling citations for major accidents, marriage announcements, divorces, wedding anniversaries, other milestones like family reunions, and court and legal notices. So all of these life events that have genealogical value, we are pulling citations for and adding them to our index. Our index has a basic search function and an advanced search function. Because our index is a collection of publication citations, they aren't the actual full articles. To view these articles, you will need to access our microfilm collection or request copies be made for you. So to view articles, you can do your search from home beforehand or search in the library and then use the microfilm collection. Although please note at the time of this recording, which is the beginning of June 2020, because of restrictions put in place by the Office of Commonwealth Libraries and the Butler County Federated Library System, in library research is not currently allowed, but we hope it will be in the coming weeks. The other option for you, um, if you aren't able to visit the library in person, either because of time restrictions or because you live out of state, you can request that paper or digital copies be sent to you. We have a handy request form available on our website, which is butlerlibrary.info slash genealogy. Regardless of which method you use, you will start with your citation forms and then use them to access articles. What's really handy is because we tell you the name of the newspaper, the exact date and publication information down to the page number and even the exact reel of microfilm, it speeds up your viewing process. So you don't have to browse through weeks worth of microfilm skimming for the article that you need, hoping to find it we tell you exactly where to go to look at the article. So some examples for this obituary for Thomas English, this was published in September of 1879. And here is the corresponding article. So we can see that Mr. English died August 27th, 1879 in Ohio, but he was formerly of Muddy Creek Township here in Butler County. He was 43. He leaves behind a wife and four small children and many friends to mourn his loss. And what's important to note here with this and with so many early obituaries that you will find in our index, Pennsylvania did not require death records until 1893. And for this gentleman who had moved to Ohio, there are not consistent death records in Ohio until 1908. So this obituary is probably the closest thing that you would get to an official death record. Um, so early obituaries are so, so, so important for our research because of the limitations of vital records in some areas of the United States. Let's look at another example. Now you'll want to remember to look at that subheading there that indicates that this is a marriage record for a woman named Kate Stevenson. And that marriage was published in the 16th October 1878 issue of the Butler Citizen. When we look at the newspaper, here's that article. They are the second marriage noted in the column that day, and we can see that they were married on October 10th at the resident of the bride's parents who live in Bonnybrook. They were married by the Reverend John J. Francis, and the couple was John E. Byers, MD of Butler, and Miss M. Kate Stevenson, daughter of Mr. James Stevenson. So we know when the wedding happened, we know where it was, we know who performed it, and we can probably connect him to a congregation. Uh, we know her father's name, we know information about the couple. And again, this is 1878. Pennsylvania did not require marriage licenses until 1885. So this marriage announcement in the newspaper is your stand-in for a marriage record. 
One last example, here's a birthday announcement that was in the paper. This is for Jane Shira. Her maiden name was Hutchison, and this was in July of 1887. And this is a really long article with a ton of really interesting information in it. Um, so it lets us know that at the house of Mr. John M. Shira, um, there was a party in honor of his parents, Mr. Peter and Mrs. Jane Hutchison Shira. She was 87 years old and the husband almost as old. They were married over 61 years. It gives us some information about their children, including the fact that their youngest son was a soldier in the Union Army and disappeared during the war. Um, there were at least 300 people at this party. Um, and it tells us information about people who gave speeches and the dinner, music, um, and a prayer session that was held. So what a wonderful piece of historic information and what a snapshot of a day in the life of this family, all from this news article. You can find the link to our obituary and newspaper index on our library website, butlerlibrary.info, and going to the genealogy page. It's the first item that you will find on our website. And we have links not just to the index, but also a downloadable request form if you need research assistance from a distance, along with some search tips and some information about the database itself. The database has basic and advanced search features. I certainly recommend starting with the basic search. And you can fill out all or just some of these fields. Although it says required next to the last name, that's more of a strong suggestion than an absolute requirement. So you might fill out just a last name. We might look for someone with the last name DeChico. And we can see five articles in the database, ranging from the 1930s to the 1990s. Clicking on any of these names will open up a citation sheet with more information about the article. So here we can see an obituary from August of 1991, and we've included a note that he was from Pittsburgh as he had moved away from the Butler area at the time of the obituary's publication. We can also do a first and last name. So if we look for someone named Margaret Campbell, we can see that we have a number of articles. Um, clicking on any of these, we'll see that some of these are going to be obituaries. We can see with this obituary citation for Margaret Campbell, not only do we have a location filled in that she was in a neighboring county in Newcastle, uh, but we have a relationship filled in. She was the wife of Plummer C. Campbell. And whenever possible, we do try to include extra information like this to help you narrow down and make sure you're looking at the citation for the right person, especially when you are dealing with a common name like Campbell or Graham or McCandless that is frequent in this area, you want to make sure that you're looking at the right Margaret Campbell. Our advanced search page has a few extra search fields to help you, along with some built-in menus that are going to have other tools that help in your search. Working down from top to bottom in the last name field, the default for all of these is exact match, meaning it will just search anything that you type in exactly as you type it. But working with some of these others, we have partial match, sound X, and wildcard options when you're doing a last name search. So for example, if I was looking for somebody named John Hutchison and I left everything as exact match in hit search, I get a couple pages of hits for people with the first name John and the last name Hutchison spelled exactly as I put it in. But if I come back to my search page, and I try a SoundX search. A SoundX is going to work with spelling variations based on the name and the letters in it. So hitting a search here, we can see that we have Hutchison with an E, Hutchison as we had initially spelled it. So we get a little bit extra spelling variation as well as some outliers that have um, some of the letters involved, the T and the S. If we do a partial match and erase it just back to the letters Hutch, 
partial match is going to find this series of letters in that order anywhere in a surname. So we can see Hutchison with an E, Hutchinson with an N, Hutchison as we had spelled it, and also names like Hutchman. And finally, our wildcard option. We can use a wildcard, which is the asterisk, to replace one or more letters in a name. So if I do Hutch with an asterisk, that's going to give me any names that start with Hutch, but then have letters coming after it. So again, we'll start getting hits like Hutch Min. If I use that wildcard in the center of a name, so I'm just looking for variations on Hutchison, either with that I or the E. Here we can see that we get Hutchison, Hutchinson, Hutchison. But none of those Hutchmin names that definitely are not a match for our person. Another tool in the advanced search feature regards first names. So your two options that you have are exact match, which will search whatever you type in that field exactly as you type it, or begins with. With begins with, it will look for names that start with the letter or series of letters that you type in here. So it could be a single letter, or it could be a longer series of letters. But we can see when we search for a name and a portion of a first name using that begins with option, we now get all names that start with J-O. So everything from Joan, Joanna, Jody, John, Jonathan, Joseph, et cetera, Josiah. Um, so if you have someone who sometimes goes by nicknames, so Jonathan or John shortened, and you're not sure which they were going by in the paper, if you have somebody who's a Josephine who sometimes goes by just Joe, all that kind of stuff, you can try using that begins with option to broaden your first name. Another tool that is really helpful is this maiden name box. So this is gonna be helpful for our search for female ancestors. Your options are the same as they are for the last name box, which are exact, partial, soundex, and wildcard. And I even sometimes use this tool just on its own. So if I am searching for somebody with a maiden name, Hutchison, I can type that in and leave everything else blank and just see what we get. And in this instance now, we have all articles for women whose maiden name was available in the obituary. Obviously, we could only cite the name if it was given in the article itself when we were indexing the newspaper. Uh, but here we just have a selection of women whose maiden name was Hutchison who have articles in our database. The field year of death is going to have a few options to help you with your search as well. So this is where you will type in the year that you are looking for your obituary. Also think of this field as your year of publication for the article or event that is happening. So if it's a marriage that you're looking for, a legal announcement, anything like that, this is also where you're going to type your date in. So think of year of death and year of publication as one and the same. You have three options for dates exact year, plus or minus one, and decade. With exact year, it's going to give you results that match the exact year that you type in. So for example, if we're looking for John Graham in 1904, we can see that we have one corresponding match. If we do plus or minus one year, so looking one year on either side of the date we put in, in this instance, it's going to search 1903 through 1905. We can see that we now have three articles that come up. This could be helpful if you aren't exactly sure of the date of someone's death or if they died right at the end of December and you aren't sure if the article was published in December or in January after the new year, try the plus or minus one year. The last option is decade. 
decade is going to give you any hit in the full 10 year decade that this year exists in. So if I'm looking at 1904, but I hit decade, it's going to give me search results spanning from 1900 through 1909. And in this instance, when I hit search, you can see that we have 10 articles that fit that criteria. One last tool that can be helpful is the results per page option. And this is also available on your basic search form. The default is going to be 10 hits per page. But if you have a common last name that's going to have a lot of results and you want to minimize the amount of clicking that you're doing, you can up it to 15 or 20 results per page. So, For example, if we were solely searching on the surname Graham, which is very common in this Butler County area, you can see that we have hundreds of pages of results. So if you upped that to 20 results per page instead of 10, it gives you fewer pages to click through. 